Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're taking a look at NVIDIA Image Scaling, which is a recent addition to NVIDIA's set of driver features and provides us with yet another upscaling option for today's games. This feature is clearly designed to be a direct response to AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, as both NIS and FSR function in very similar ways, and NVIDIA is promising open and much wider support for NIS compared to their closed off DLSS solution. Like FSR, NIS is a spatial upscaling technology that includes both an upscaling and sharpening path in an attempt to mimic native resolution without the complexity of a temporal solution. Spatial upscaling is simpler and doesn't rely on things like past frames, jittering, or motion vectors for the final output image, which means it can be implemented both in games and at a driver level. NVIDIA are offering both types of implementation. Developers can integrate NIS using their SDK, or NVIDIA GPU owners can apply NIS themselves using the latest drivers, including on older GPUs that don't support DLSS. I was originally planning to wait until we saw games start to implement the new NIS SDK, but it's been a month and so far there are no signs of games using NIS, with most developers preferring to use FSR instead. But no worries, we'll just check out the driver-based option that NVIDIA are now providing, at least for now, and compare it to FSR and DLSS in a small selection of today's games. Now, NVIDIA claims that they've had a spatial upscaler available in their driver for years now, so this new image scaling feature is essentially a repackaging of their existing solutions into something a bit neater, a rebrand if you will. However, despite NVIDIA saying this, their driver-based solution is not the same as FSR, so NVIDIA or anyone else claiming that they've had FSR in the driver for years is wrong. The reason for this is that driver-based NIS is applied to the final composed image from a game, which means it will upscale everything on the screen, including UI elements, menus, and post-process effects. FSR being implemented into the game rendering pipeline means that only the game graphics itself are spatially upscaled, while the UI and menus are rendered at the full native resolution. This is what the NIS SDK should also achieve, although again, it hasn't been used yet as far as I can tell. Even though NVIDIA has packaged NIS into a more accessible feature than it was before, it's still rather clunky to use. This isn't a one-click feature in the driver, instead it's a multi-step process. First you have to enable image scaling in either the NVIDIA control panel or GeForce Experience. Why these features are split or duplicated across two control panels is beyond me, and rather dumb, but that's another issue for another day. From there you have to change the output resolution in the game itself, either via the game settings or using GeForce Experience's optimized settings feature, and once this is done, NIS will begin working, and you can tweak the level of sharpening using the slider through, again, the GeForce Experience overlay in games. While this does allow you to apply NIS to every game, the downside is it's also a global feature, so to, to disable it on a per game basis, you have to both run the game at its native resolution and have the sharpness slider manually set to zero for that game. Combined with the actual setup process, yeah, it's a bit clunky and the implementation feels rushed. In my opinion, it would have made much more sense to have a one-click feature where you can set it per game that automatically enables NIS when required and adjust the game resolution settings using the same pipeline as GeForce Experience's optimized feature. So the setup process didn't leave me with the best first impressions, but how does it actually perform? For that, we'll look at a small handful of games and then run some performance benchmarks. Everything here was captured on my Ryzen 9 5950X test rig with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card. The latest NVIDIA drivers, version 497.09 were used, and for DLSS image quality, I've made sure every game is running with at least DLSS 2.3 or newer via manual updates, though some games come with that version by default. First up we have Far Cry 6. This is a game that only supports FSR, although FSR works on every GPU, so there is really no reason to use driver-based NIS here. But this will be the case for all games tested. I specifically want to compare NIS to FSR, so this specific use case is more for science than a practical reflection of where you'd use NIS. What we're looking at here is a comparison between the game running natively at 4K, using FSR Ultra Quality Mode, and NIS with a resolution scale of 77%, which is the same render resolution as FSR Ultra Quality. NIS sharpening was set to the default of 50. In this scene, it's quite hard to tell the difference between the three configurations. FSR and NIS both have slightly more shimmering and jagged edges than the native image, and slightly less detail, but the differences are small enough that you can't really notice. 
Even though NIS is upscaling the UI here while FSR does not, that wasn't much of an issue in Far Cry 6 as the UI is hardly the highest resolution implementation I've seen. And even when we zoom into certain areas, while the FSR and NIS images are different, which suggests NIS isn't just a direct code copy of FSR, it's pretty difficult to tell the difference. Any differences would just end up being nitpicks. Again, looking at a side-by-side -side here, comparing the various options in the benchmark pass, it's very difficult to spot any significant differences between FSR and NIS. They basically look the same, especially when you don't zoom or slow down the footage. The only area in Far Cry 6 where I noticed that NIS was worse was in the loading screens, which use a bit of a grain effect. FSR doesn't upscale these images, they are displayed natively, so we get nice fine grain. NIS has to upscale the grain from a lower resolution, which is always a challenge for upscaling and tends to look more pronounced and less pleasant. The next title I want to show is F1 2021. In this menu screen running at 4K, the UI degradation from using NIS with a 77% resolution scale is apparent, especially around the red overview text in the top left where FSR and DLSS both display this natively, but NIS scales and processes it, which makes it look worse. And this is apparent across the game, even with relatively minor amounts of scaling. It gets more obvious when using NIS at 50% resolution scaling, where the interface is clearly much blurrier than the native rendering options. As for the detail presented on the F1 car model, it's pretty close between FSR ultra quality and NIS at 77%, and it depends on the level of sharpening you use. However, in my opinion, the FSR sharpening pass is better in this game and gets closer to native with fewer artifacts. Even after messing around with several sharpening options for NIS, the NIS sharpening pass doesn't get as close to native and tends to have more ringing and can brighten edges where FSR does not. DLSS set to the quality mode doesn't have this issue either, and it delivers the best image quality, if only slightly ahead of FSR at 4K. This also plays out in the races in the game itself, you can see here that despite FSR looking sharper than NIS for some elements on the screen, like the Castrol logo, NIS looks over sharpened for elements like the grating on the right. The FSR image looks closer to native, and yeah, you can reduce the level of sharpening with NIS to reduce the artifacts, but this makes some of the elements even less sharp than FSR, so it's kind of improving one thing while hurting another. Given there is so much motion in this game, DLSS and FSR end up looking very similar in most instances, especially at the highest available quality settings, which is all you would really need as the game runs excellently in general. In Horizon Zero Dawn, comparing NIS at 77% to FSR using ultra quality, again we see the UI degradation from NIS upscaling the entire image. The white text in the upper left corner is noticeably more crisp with FSR, which looks identical to native. Outside of this, there's really no major differences between NIS and FSR using these settings, which makes sense as both use a similar spatial upscaling technique. Where the major differences come in is when comparing DLSS to both FSR and NIS. I'm using the DLSS quality preset here, and DLSS is noticeably softer and less aliased than the spatial upscalers, especially for the grass blowing in the breeze. The trees in the background are also more detailed with DLSS, while FSR and NIS are sharper for some of the fine texture detail on Aloy and the tree. But generally in this title, with a lot of moving foliage, the way DLSS handles this is better than the spatial upscalers, and it's what I'd use if I had a current generation NVIDIA GPU. I also wanted to check the game at 1440p, where again, DLSS is clearly the best way to play Horizon Zero Dawn, especially if you add a slight sharpening pass on top. But as for FSR versus NIS, I feel FSR pulls further ahead here, the UI differences are more noticeable than at 4K, and the FSR ultra quality image appears to preserve detail a bit better than NIS at 77%. Even though I'm using the same level of sharpening as at 4K, I feel that at 1440p this setting is over sharpening and over processing the NIS image and probably should be turned down, although like in F1 2021 this would only cause the image to be even less sharp than FSR. What we see in Deathloop is basically identical to the other games we've looked at so far in terms of how NIS performs relative to the other scaling solutions. The default sharpening setting of 50 massively over sharpens this game. I had to turn it down to more like 10 to get a decent image. With these settings at play, NIS at 77% compared to FSR Ultra Quality is again, it's pretty similar in how it resolves fine detail. And again, depending on where you look, FSR and NIS trade blows in image quality. The main difference is more in how the game is sharpened, and once again I feel the FSR sharpening solution gets us closer to how the game looks at native resolution, even though FSR doesn't allow us to adjust the sharpening strength while NIS does.
The only advantage I've seen from the sharpening slider in NIS so far is to reduce the amount of artifacts, whereas with FSR the default and unchangeable setting often looks great straight away and better than any available NIS option. However, when I say better, I'm talking about very small differences most of the time. I typically find the UI resolution decrease more noticeable than the slight differences in sharpening implementation, but it does depend on the game, the scene, and the settings. Like in Horizon Zero Dawn, DLSS is a step up in image quality from both FSR and NIS, especially in terms of temporal stability. The spatial solutions tend to have a bit of shimmering and detail loss around fine elements, whereas DLSS does a better job of reconstructing these areas and gives us high image quality that's closer to native in most instances. The final game I'm looking at today is Farming Simulator 22, where I spent a bit of time creating a badass character to plow the fields. Now, Farming Simulator isn't the most graphically intensive game. It varies between mid-2000s low-res JPEGs of wood to highly detailed farming equipment internals, and also it's capped to 60 FPS, so there aren't always any practical benefits to using upscaling, but it's still an interesting case as the game is a bit different to those that we've already looked at, and it supports FSR and DLSS. In this title, a lot of the issues I was talking about with the other games are present here. Farming Simulator was the most noticeable example of a reduction in UI quality when running NIS, particularly when using resolution scaling factors below 77%. For example, here the UI is clearly a lower resolution and being post-processed in comparison to the native image or the FSR image using the performance preset at 4K. Aside from that, in this game, FSR tends to look slightly oversharpened, although in my opinion the FSR image is somewhat closer to native than what you'd see from NIS. The differences are small though outside of the UI issues. In this game, DLSS does look somewhat better when comparing DLSS quality to FSR Ultra quality and NIS at 77%, and the gap widens further when using the performance modes for each with a 50% render resolution. In terms of performance, there's not a lot to get excited about as both FSR and NIS deliver roughly the same frame rates when set to the same render resolution. Here's Far Cry 6, for example, tested at 4K using the Ultra preset. FSR delivered slightly higher 1% low numbers, but outside of that, it and NIS both delivered similar performance uplifts using the Ultra quality preset. FSR took a small lead when using the performance mode, which renders at 1080p. In Horizon Zero Dawn, running NIS is a couple of FPS faster than using FSR, but the overall difference is small, and DLSS in this game is providing the best visuals for the level of performance achieved. When using the performance modes for all, or 50% resolution scaling for NIS, both the spatial techniques did run faster than DLSS, though DLSS delivers higher image quality. In F1 2021, NIS was a whopping 2 FPS faster, and both spatial techniques come in slower than DLSS, again by a couple of FPS. These sorts of differences are negligible in my opinion. The one outlier in my testing was Deathloop, which was noticeably faster using NIS compared to other techniques, whether we're comparing in the highest quality modes or in the performance modes. I'm not sure why this would be the case in this game compared to the others, but it's a good result for NIS here, even though the margins are still relatively small. Farming Simulator being capped to 60 FPS wasn't benchmarked, of course, because a 60 FPS cap kind of makes benchmarking not that relevant. Overall, NVIDIA's driver-based image upscaling solution is very much as expected. It's a spatial upscaling technology, so the end result is similar to what AMD has achieved with Fidelity FX Super Resolution. It's a relatively low-cost upscaler in terms of performance from a given render resolution, and it has similar issues such as shimmering and loss of fine detail, depending on the game and settings used. However, across the games that I looked at, it was pretty evident that NIS as a driver solution is not quite as good as FSR. By upscaling after each frame is fully rendered and composed, NIS upscales and lowers the quality of UI and menu elements in basically every game. FSR is integrated into the games themselves before the UI is rendered, which leads to higher UI quality, especially at lower resolutions or higher upscaling factors. You may not think this is a particularly big deal, but to me, when the UI, menus, and text are running at a sub-native resolution, the entire visual presentation does feel lower quality. Aside from this, the quality of game upscaling is pretty similar between FSR and NIS, although in most instances I feel that FSR uses a very slightly superior sharpening technique which delivers a closer to native image, even after optimizing the level of sharpening using NIS's built-in slider. It's a small difference, but I was generally able to find more sharpening artifacts with NIS than FSR, even though FSR's sharpening level cannot be changed. This is game dependent of course, and there are some titles where FSR is oversharpened, so having a sharpening slider like NIS 
would be useful. But I really feel that AMD's approach to spatial upscaling has been justified after seeing these NIS results. Integrating FSR into games does result in better image quality, and also FSR is easier to use. The way you have to enable NIS in the driver is clumsy and feels rushed or even hacked into the driver. It's not a one-click solution like FSR or DLSSR inside games. However, these issues with NIS are largely based on it being a driver solution, not a game solution, and NVIDIA does have an NIS SDK that developers can use to create an FSR-like feature within games. But I'm just not sure what the point is or why you'd bother. NIS doesn't create higher visual fidelity than FSR, and it doesn't run faster, so it's not advancing spatial upscaling. FSR is already available and works across all GPUs, including from NVIDIA. So why release an NIS feature for game devs to use months after AMD already did the same thing with FSR? It feels totally redundant. The main advantage NIS has is that it's built into NVIDIA's driver and it can be applied to any game. But even that last part isn't anything special as third-party tools like Lossless Scaling and Magpie already allow you to use FSR with any game, thanks to FSR being open source, and they've done so for months. So again, NIS isn't adding much new to the table here? With all of this said, I don't think that having NIS as an option is bad or anything, and having it integrated into the driver is better than what AMD provides, which is not providing a driver feature at all. AMD really should integrate FSR into their driver so AMD GPU owners don't need to resort to third-party tools that don't support FSR. NIS also can be effective in games that don't offer any other scaling technologies, so from that sense, it is nice to have more options, although I see no reason to use it instead of FSR or DLSS in the games that have either or both of those features. The introduction of NIS also doesn't change much about the hierarchy of image upscaling technologies. DLSS is still the best option in terms of image quality, and is the most versatile over a range of resolutions and quality settings, while also being the most broadly supported in today's games. Spatial technologies then come in anywhere from slightly behind to a fair way behind, with FSR offering better image quality than the driver-based NIS solution, at least based on what I've seen today. I guess NVIDIA's goal here was to develop an upscaling solution that would work on their non-RTX GPUs, including their current generation GeForce 16 series cards like the GTX 1660, and yes, those are still NVIDIA's current mainstream GPUs. But I can't help but feel that effectively duplicating FSR was a bit of a wasted effort, given GTX 1660 owners could already take advantage of special upscaling, either through FSR in games, or third-party tools, or even just a combination of NVIDIA's older, existing driver-based technologies. It would have benefited these customers more if NVIDIA found a way to utilize DLSS on these GPUs, even if it was at a lower quality level or at a higher performance cost because they have to figure out a way to render it without using their tensor cores. But I've repeatedly asked NVIDIA about this and their answer is that they're not even bothering to look into it as this would be a distraction for them. So maybe Intel will need to do the work for them when they introduce their temporal upscaling solution in XESS in the coming months, which Intel are claiming should work across more GPUs. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one and a look into NVIDIA's image scaling technology. I'm not sure I'll look into this again if it ever comes out into an SDK form integrated into games. I think, it, as I said, it's very similar to FSR in a lot of ways, and I imagine that a lot of game developers will just continue choosing to use FSR for their titles, but again, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. As always, if you want to support our testing and our work that we do with these image quality comparison videos, which can be a bit of a challenge, a bit lengthy to put together, then do consider supporting us by our Patreon or Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.